Hold up, wait, this wasn't clickbait, but I do think we're still gonna see Gigas. I know the title is The End of Gigas and whatever, but I still think we'll get some Gigas in some capacity, just not traditional Gigas, and especially no more B&M Gigas. Gigas are probably some of the most beloved coasters out there. Millie is still an icon to CP to this day. I-305 and Fury are some of the most highly praised coasters out there, and Orion and Leviathan are still some of the most popular rides in the park. And Steel Dragon is th there, just sitting there doing his thing. These rides are a lot of people's favorites, and while I haven't been on one yet, I will be getting on one this summer, and I'm super excited. However, I think Gigas are a dying breed. As sad as it sounds, I just don't think anyone is going to be building any of these anymore, and it's for a couple of reasons. No blase blasing in this one, we're just heading straight into it. First, let's look at the three manufacturers that have built them in the past. I want to ask Morgan right off the bat, because ain't nobody even working with Morgan, much less about to buy a Giga from them. They're lucky if they get to build a Hyper GTX or a family coaster. If there was another Morgan Giga, I'll eat my hat. So then what about Intamin? Well, Intamin hasn't built a traditional Giga since I-305 in 2010. As crazy as it sounds, it's been over 10 years since Intamin has built a traditional Giga. But I am talking traditional Giga, and I'll get back to that in a little bit. I just think that I-305 has too many problems for other companies to say, hey, I want one of those. The wheels burned off really fast, they had to reprofile the whole friggin' first turn, and it was a terrible financial investment, as even though it's one of their biggest coasters, it's still one of the least popular in the park. I guess Intimidator 305 was just a little too intimidating. <laughs> Also, Intamin just kind of doesn't work with enough people to make one of these. The main buyer of Giga Coasters, Cedar Fair, doesn't work with Intamin, like, at all. And if they were to work with Intamin, I think they'd be way more likely to buy one of those new generation Blitz Coasters rather than test the waters with a friggin' 300-foot monster. Intamin's too rich for Six Flags blood, and they've screwed over independent parks time and time again. Maybe Hershen would work with them, but actually, has Hershen ever worked with Intamin on a maybe her coaster? Can someone Google that? I can't actually think off the top of my head of anything. Universal isn't going to build a Giga Coaster and mess up their skyline, and SeaWorld is probably going to take a step back from large investments for a while. The only chains I can think of are Merlin, because they have worked with them recently to retract Colossus, and the owner of the Wallaby Parks. But even those parks, I don't even know if they would add a Giga. If they did, I would think that Conda or the Park Asterix coaster would have been a Giga, especially Conda. That's already almost there. Why wouldn't they just go for it? I think Merlin already has enough Intamins with Colossus, Stealth, Rita, yada yada yada, plus a lot of their parks have height restrictions, and an Intamin Giga just wouldn't fit in a lot of their parks. I mean, unless you want an I-306 that C Life Park or friggin' Lego Land. The last major Giga Builder is B&M, and they're by far the most successful. I mean, not by far, but they were the most successful for sure. They've built three traditional Gigas fairly recently. In fact, one of the only major coasters to open last year was the B&M Giga. So Coastoons, how could this be the end of Gigas if there was one built last year? Well, I want to throw this curveball at you. Which Cedar Fair Park is left that could build a Giga? I mean, realistically, Cedar Fair is the only one that's going to build one of these B&M Gigas. Ain't nobody else can afford them. SeaWorld probably could after they recover from the pandemic, but BGT, SeaWorld Orlando, and SeaWorld San Diego have height limits. BG Dub is in direct competition with I-305, and I really just can't see a B&M Giga going to SeaWorld San Antonio. That park needs a lot more help before getting an investment like this. But realistically, what Cedar Fair Park could get a B&M Giga? Knott's has no room, and all the other parks have Gigas. I've heard pretty flimsy arguments that it could go to Worlds of Fun, but, I mean, it's worlds of fun. Come on, the park with a crappy Batman near clone, the crappy Mystic Timbers near clone, and the Morgan Hyper is going to get a B&M Giga. Try and say that out loud one more time seriously, and then maybe I'll consider it a possibility. So, realistically, I think Cedar Fair is done with B&M Gigas. But I think an even bigger factor to why B&M Gigas, and just traditional Gigas in general, are a dying breed is because of the competition within their own companies. B&M Hypers are starting to look a lot more similar to B&M Gigas. It's a combination of both B&M using hyper elements like Camelbacks and Speed Hills more on their Gigas, and also hyper layered starting to incorporate more twists and turns and creative elements like a Giga would. Everyone compared Orion to Candemonium, not just because there were two big B&Ms opening in the same year. I mean, that, that helped, but that's not the only reason. They compare them to each other because they are strangely similar. They both have a big first drop that goes into a big airtime hill, although Orion's is turned, so I'll give it that. Then they go into a big turnaround and have a speed hill and a camelback, each in opposite order. Then they go into a helix, into another hill, and Candemonium has one more helix while Orion just goes into the brakes. The layouts are oddly similar, and you can't help but think there was some cross-checking when designing there. It makes you wonder if these two models have the same trains, the same restraints, and are even classified as the same on the website, and they have super similar layouts. Layouts? Are they really that different at all? And then you have Intamin side of the coin, Intamin typers. Intamin hypers are starting to look a lot more like Gigas. They're experimenting with a lot of low to the ground maneuvers and mixed in with long drawn out elements like was previously found in I-305 Millennium Force. We saw this both with Conda and Hyperion, and while there is still a clear focus on airtime, especially with Conda, I think it's safe to say these mega coasters are starting to look a bit more like traditional Gigas. So if B&M Gigas are starting to look like hypers and Intamin hypers are starting to look like Gigas, 
then what really is the point of buying a Giga? At least a traditional run. All right, all right, fine. Let's get to it. No, I don't think we're not going to see any more Gigas at all. Only traditional Gigas. We've started to see some more untraditional Gigas begin to pop up, like the first one being Red Force at Ferrari Land. This is basically an intimate accelerator, but in reality, it's kind of a Giga. It's in the height range, and it's not a hydraulic launch. So by definition, it's a Giga, just not a traditional one. Same with that Drock Inspire concept that got scrapped. Fit the Giga height range, but was a pre pretty abnormal Giga that almost resembled more of an intimate impulse than anything. I think this is the direction we're going towards in the future, abnormal Gigas. And launches aren't the only thing, I think a Giga T-Rex or a Giga Hybrid would fit that abnormal definition. The T-Rex is most certainly going to have inversions, which is something that we've never seen in a Giga, plus it's on a single rail, so that's new too, and a Giga Hybrid would be the first time we've seen wooden structure in a Giga Coaster. That's kind of crazy. We could also see some mock Gigas or potentially some Gerstlauer Gigas. The mock Gigas might be the closest to a traditional Giga, but they'll probably spice it up with some inversions like they do with their Hypers. But a Gerstlauer Giga would be nuts. Imagine a mad steep drop on a 300 foot coaster, like Hannibal on crack. Now add the Karnan trick in at 300 feet and... Oof. That might be a new number one. If this is the future of Gigas, I'm really excited because they're so much more creative and original. It basically takes a just big hyper and turns it into something more. I hope we see more of these soon. Maybe not like the Drunk Inspire thing, that was kind of stupid, but like creative Gigas like that. I want to see more creative Gigas in the future because it gives manufacturers a chance to go all out. And when manufacturers get a chance to go all out, it usually leads to great results.